The Blunt Post with Vic. Len and Arminet, welcome to The Blunt Post with Vic this morning. How are you today? We're very good, thank you. Hello, thank you, very good. Great, you're coming in from uh, Australia. We are yes. 19 hours, 19 hours apart. Yeah, we're in Queensland, sunny Queensland, so we're, we're 18 hours. Uh, Sydney is 19 hours because they have a daylight saving, but uh, we're sunnier than Sydney. So, so we don't have daylight saving. So we don't you're, need daylight you are saving. Having, you're in the middle of summer right now, so Indeed. the opposite of, uh, of us, even though, you know, it's uh, pretty nice right now in LA. You know, let's get right to it. I was very inspired by uh, your story, if you can call it that, but I, I would say initiative, your work, um, and what you're doing. The reason I wanted you on my show is because, you know, oftentimes we, we talk about what the government can do for us, leaders, politicians can do for us, uh, or we complain about things that are wrong. And uh, what you've done, and we'll get into that so that uh, people listening know what I'm talking about. Uh, what you've done is you've actually taken the initiative, uh, taken the, the bull by the horn, as they say, and you've really made a big difference. Uh, you have, uh, years ago, you launched what's called the uh, uh, Origins Discovery Organization, and it's a program which has adopted a village in Armenia, in rural Armenia, where you are helping these uh, uh, villages that are not uh, as focused on and they, they need the extra help so that people uh, can really focus their help and their benevolence um, uh, on these smaller villages that, that no normally don't get as much attention from uh, neither yeah. the Armenian government nor diaspora because there's a lot more focus on uh, mainstream Yerevan, Gumri, etc. And um, before I, I go any further, uh, one of you, if you can tell me about your initial organization that you launched uh, and what that looked like and where it is now. So, um, first of all, thanks for the opportunity, uh, Vic. Uh, uh, we're inspired by your program and. Uh, and uh, we hope that this opportunity is, is going to allow us to reach to a lot of uh, good people there in the United States and beyond. Uh, Origins uh, is really about attracting people to Armenia. Uh, there are a number of uh, sub-projects uh, such as the Silk Road Wine Trail that we pioneered in Fayatsor uh, because we're based in Arani, the famous wine growing region. Uh, and uh, the, I guess, uh, the, the part that prepares Armenians for uh, visitors is, is more about the adopt a village program. Uh, you're right that uh, we don't like uh, just talking about things, we like action. So we didn't wait for a particular government. Uh, we've been doing this for many years uh, since I, I met my Armenian wife and was inspired by the journey of her people. Uh, basically, I was inspired because of the injustices that had been, uh, uh, you know, experienced by the Armenian people. And I, I don't just mean those in Armenia or Artsakh, but also the diaspora, Pakistan, uh, all sorts of uh, areas where there's been injustice. So in summary, we wanted to make sure that we were trying to do something uh, but we're just very ordinary people and uh, Dr. Village is about trying to connect very ordinary people to, to make that special difference. And also we didn't want to just sit there and wait to see what someone else will do, what government will do. I think we all should do whatever we can without waiting that someone else will do instead of us. Absolutely. I did, I did uh, forget to uh, mention to those listening that uh, you are this dynamic couple. Um, Len, you are New Zealander slash Australian and Armina, you are originally uh, from Armenia and yes. you do live in Australia now, but you're about to migrate permanently uh, mm -hmm. to Armenia. 
Uh, very yes. soon. Yes, I have some RCM bytes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We so, call it our name and by choice. Yes, an honorary one. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for that. And uh, you know what's fascinating is I was, you know, after having talked to you and looking at all the materials you sent me and everything, and it just dawned on me that one of my sort of unrealistic fantasies that I have when I get a little bit tired of city life, because I grew up in LA and the traffic and all of that is, I always say I want to, because I'm not a beach person at all. Uh, I always say I want to uh, retire in a little tiny cabin uh, by the mountains where there's a river that flows next to it. Then I was looking at where your lodge is and I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> they, they, they did exactly what I've always fantasized about, except yours is a much bigger scale. So let's talk about the RNE Lodge, which as you said, mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in the RNE region, the wine region of Armenia, which is getting a lot of attention um, um, in the wine connoisseur uh, uh, crowds, if you will. Uh, and you, you've, you're building this very sort of hybrid lodge that can have multiple purposes uh, on this huge property that also has a museum and a cultural center. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that idea come about? Uh, well, when I went to RNE, I understood it was a very special place historically, culturally, scenically. Uh, if it was a similar place in the United States or Australia, there would be hotels everywhere and uh, thousands of visitors. And many people don't even know that uh, during communist times in the 30s, there was an uprising against the communists uh, from RNE. And uh, there's so many incredible historical events and, and uh, features that I went there, came to this beautiful site. And as is common uh, in rural Armenia, I looked around and said, well, why hasn't anyone uh, made something of this very special place? Uh, wh why, why can't we provide some jobs and some hope for the people? Because after all, it's mostly about providing hope the enemy is just a couple of kilometers away. Uh, you know, we know that there's a threat. Uh, so we need to populate, not depopulate, which is why I get a, a little bit anxious when I see so many projects going to Yerevan, new statues, new parks, uh, new churches. Uh, what, what's needed is an, a complete uh, opposite uh, change in emphasis in, uh, in that the heartland, the rural heartland, such as Arani, uh, is emphasized and economic development brings population uh, and, and wealth. I don't really want to talk much about the, the lodge. Uh, the lodge is going to be a fantastic place for, from which we base uh, our endeavors and also, but it will be used as part of our Adopt a village uh, agricultural training because we have uh, we have a partnership with uh, Green Lane NGO, uh, but but mainly I, I, I prefer to focus more on the the museum. And as I said, we are just ordinary people, so it sounds all very grand. Oh, you're building a lodge, oh, and you're also building museum, but we can't do it by ourselves. We're very ordinary people. And this is where we're asking others um, to, to help out both Armenians and friends of Armenia. Absolutely. And I was going to get to that because I believe uh, you have a fundraiser coming up in Australia yeah. uh, for this uh, museum and cultural center. Before we talk about the fundraiser and how people can participate and donate and help out, uh, Tell me a little bit about the museum. What sort of a museum will it be? The museum, it, uh, it will be built uh, with the houses looking like uh, around century ago houses. So it will remind people old village, Armenian village. 
where people would be dressed in our national costumes and we will have village uh, elderly people sitting in a yard playing Nardi so the visitors can get all that uh, sense of uh, real Armenian rural life. And uh, when museum is built, it will be gifted to the community office so they can actually do all the management themselves and uh, uh, so the profits can go to developing the community and also to helping people and uh, the houses will represent different uh, cultural aspects armenian so it would be like jewelry house uh, armenian kitchen winemaking uh, metal work and so on and also school where like uh, we will have music and dance. Yes, wow, that's we're going to have lot. We're going to a, a special square where we can do festivals as well too, because festivals uh, are an important part of Armenian culture. When I went to Armenia, quite often I would joke with Armenia and say, well, "Where are the dancing girls? Where are the dancing mm -hmm. girls?" So I wasn't being unkind or rude. Uh, but at the same time, where can you go to see and experience all of these different things in one place? And that was the whole idea. Yeah, everything in one place. Is there, um, is there like a, a, any kind of a particular collection that will be, or your like a special thing that you're planning for the museum or you're leaving that mm -hmm. out to the community to decide? So, so several of the craft houses, as we call them, uh, which have been donated, uh, we are discussing with the, the families that donated those. Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be one family, uh, but they, those families that donate enough to construct a, one of these small uh, craft houses, they, they get their family name on it and then they get a say on what goes in there. So we are going to be uh, looking for various uh, artifacts and interesting things. Now we have liaison with government and with the um, uh, people that uh, also run the uh, RNE1 cave complex. So for example, we're hoping to display some of the uh, articles uh, if we can. Uh, one little secret I can tell you, uh, please don't tell anybody, uh, is that we uh, we designed a, um, a special uh, Hachkar of all Armenians, which uh, will be placed near the sculpture house, as we call it. That was actually donated by a non-Armenian friend of mine, Captain Robert Swain, who we're very grateful for. Uh, and exactly. it will go on like that. So to answer your question, we, we don't have specific artifacts. We will work through that. Uh, the first thing, we, bridge we have to cross is actually constructing. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, as we construct the buildings, we will, when we're there, uh, locate a lot of interesting, both uh, inanimate objects, but also remember, as my wife was saying, Part of the museum is about the people there as well, too, not just the, the things. Absolutely, it's the entire experience. Too bad you can't have the shoe. I, I, I doubt the Armenian government will part with that. And, replica. <laughs> and for those listening, uh, so uh, um, RNE is, is the wine region, Armenia's wine region. And a few years back, uh, in a cave, they discovered a winery, which is not believed, but it's uh, it is the oldest winery uh, found in the world, uh, and in the same uh, in the same sort of uh, vicinity, they found the world's oldest shoe, and that's the shoe that I'm referring to. <laughs> that uh, I don't think the Armenian government will uh, will part with that for the museum. Uh, so that's a that's a it, it it's it's such a comprehensive sort of. Um, a, a campus, for the lack of a, a better word, that you are building. So let's talk about this. Um, uh, let's first talk about the fundraiser that you're having, um, you know, what it benefits, and also tell us how to uh, participate, uh, contribute, all of that. 
Well, the, the fundraiser uh, is in some ways our uh, goodbye to our friends, uh, our colleagues in, in Australia, though we know most of the people that will attend on the 19th of uh, February, that's Australian time. So I guess it'll be in the evening in the, of the 18th of US time. Uh, most of them will be attending by remote means anyway because of this, this pandemic. Uh, but we're going to try and gather as many people as possible uh, to um, say goodbye. But we're very fortunate uh, uh, because we have uh, a, a large number, I think more than 24 um, speakers uh, wow. and uh, entertainers, yes, uh, who uh, they're from different parts, including the United States. Uh, and, uh, also from Armenia itself, we hope that the the um, community head will uh, will be uh, presenting from the museum site, which is in the, one of our vineyards uh, next to the Arpa River. So even with snow there, they, I think it'll it'll be wonderful. Hopefully, there's snow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and so hopefully uh, with a just under three hour event, it won't be too boring because it'll be like a telethon style thing. And we already have the GoFundMe. Uh, active. Um, we're very grateful for the um, donations already. Uh, we hope that in the lead up, uh, people will uh, donate using the GoFundMe link. But uh, more, but because, and we understand this completely, trust is a huge issue when it comes to donations, especially to Armenia. Uh, we hope that people, having had the opportunity to listen to the participants, many of them are very senior people. Uh, from uh, different important parts of uh, the um, cultural spectrum, from science, from, from tourism, and many other areas. Once they tell you about what we're doing and have done, and also a little bit about their trust in us, hopefully, uh, then people will um, hopefully contribute. And, and every, every dollar is really important. It doesn't matter if it's only a few dollars. So it's, it's the it's the thought that that counts. So, where, how can how can people find out more information and the link to the fundraiser? Right. Sure. So, uh, the uh, RNE Lodge uh, website is simply that A R E N I Lodge, all one word, dot com. So, uh, go to RNE Lodge dot com, and on the homepage, you'll find a link to the uh, museum. Page, uh, which is called RE Open Air Cultural Museum. Uh, and on that page, uh, you'll find uh, not just uh, details of the fundraiser, which is called Armenian Defense and uh, Culture uh, Fundraiser, uh, but also uh, some information about a little competition that we, we're running. So, so uh, for every a dollar donated, uh, people can go into a competition for a trip that we're personally donating uh, to for uh, two people to come to Armenia and stay in our in our lodge, which uh, we hope uh, will be very successful. Uh, just to add a little bit of a thank you from us personally, uh, okay. and I might I might add, sorry, uh, that of the funds that uh, that are being contributed to build that uh, museum. Uh, we personally also donating one third of those funds. Wow, fantastic. So when people donate, they're entering a sweepstake, if you will. Indeed. Uh, yeah, yes. every $10 a trip, a trip sorry, every me. $10 gives you one entry. Every $10. Yes. And that yes. website is rnelodge.com. And that's uh, A-R-E-N-I Lodge, L-O-D-G-E. Dot com, uh, so people can go that to rnelodge.com, find out more info, read up, look at pictures, uh, uh, the sort of the process and all of that, as well as about the fundraiser and how you can uh, attend live uh, yes. and also yes. donate. Yeah. Um, also, sorry, Vic. Uh, also, if they go on Facebook to RNE Lodge then they will find the link uh, for event where actually the Zoom link and all the information is there. 
Okay, is it Facebook or is it an event? Sorry? Uh, on Facebook, is it an event or an actual page for RNE Lodge? And on an actual page for RNE Lodge, there is an event created especially for February 19. Okay, fantastic. So if you go to Facebook and do a search, RNE Lodge, a page yes. will come up and you can like the page so you can keep get, getting updates as well as uh, mm -hmm. look at the event on the page, which is the fundraiser uh, yes. itself. Mm -hmm. And so you're about to move to uh, Armenia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, are you going to be staying there uh, at the lodge yes. initially? Yes. You know, I'm even there. taking my 85 year old mother there. Wow. So you know, my family think I'm a little bit crazy moving from the beaches of Australia to Armenia. But I think you, you can't do human rights because I'm a genocide activist as well. You can't do that part time. You, you can't pay lip service to um, trying to support uh, people um, in a um, you know, less well off place. Um, I could sit on the beach and just drink beer, but uh, uh, I gave up my job in the United Nations to commit to um, to helping because I, I don't I don't think it's right that uh, that we sit here with so much in, in the West and we and we uh, we talk about our assets and we worry about silly things really when there's so many more important things to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If if we all do just a little bit, uh, you're doing a lot, but just a little bit, uh, we will uh, turn things around from this yeah. uh, last year and a half. Yeah, this I, tough year and a half that Armenia and Artsakh have had. Uh, look, I, Vic, I can tell you, you know, I don't just do this as a charity. I, I believe in Armenia's potential. I believe that uh, the Greenlands which are largely underdeveloped and not, not, not with too many sciences either. Uh, the, the, the young people, you see the light in their eyes, how smart they are. Uh, I believe that there's so much opportunity. I mean, it's one of the, the only democratic places in that, in that part. And I believe that uh, just giving these people an opportunity. Actually, it's not so much about charity. I believe that uh, many will become, uh, you know, quite wealthy in its own its, its own way. So, in fact, those who are thinking about uh, perhaps good business, like we, for example, they're even thinking about uh, opening a, a high technology school there. Uh, think about it. Uh, the wages are, are not high. Um, given an opportunity, people work hard uh, for that opportunity, much harder than, than they might here in Australia. Uh, and uh, it's close to major markets. So why wouldn't you think about uh, if you were thinking about investing? So I encourage everyone listening to think not just about charity, but also about business. Absolutely. It's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that you are doing. Uh, I want to um, thank you for uh, being on the Blunt Post with Vic. I want to say good luck, although you don't need it. And uh, I can't wait to uh, see the lodge, the museum in its majesty when it's time and it's ready um, and all of that. So thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, again, it's ironylodge.com and also on Facebook to find out more, to attend the fundraiser live and to uh, donate, contribute, and get connected to um, Len and Armina. So thank you again. Thank, thank you, Vic. We should just quite quickly mention that those who want to, to put questions in during the fundraiser can also join a Zoom link, which we'll provide. So it'll, only, it'll be streamed also on Facebook. So uh, we, we do hope that people will attend in, in uh, different platforms as they see fit. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. The Blunt Post with Vic.